So welcome to the Parson series and today it's a very very dynamic and very important topic that is your chemical injuries. As you know you know chemical injuries is again ophthalmic emergency again it is worthwhile to go through this topic from the Parsons. So let's get started. Uh, if I talk about the chemical injuries see you have got two kind of injuries we can have alkalis and we can also have the acid injuries. So first we will be taking the alkalis injuries like the caustics such as um, lime usually occur from fresh mortar or we have whitewash entering they can go from the laboratories or day-to-day -day life also alkalis kya hote hain? they are lipophilic so they are saponifying the fatty acids of the cell membranes they are destroying the collagen and proteoglycans in the stroma so this <coughs> will be the mechanism of action of the alkalis because you know um, uh, though it always you know it is acids which uh, feels more scary but when you uh, talk about the chemical injury it is actually more fury in cases of alkali injury it is more more cumbersome and more severe when we talk about the alkalis because they are actually uh, so, uh, you know penetrating the fatty acids they are causing the destruction of the uh, collagen as well as proteoglycan so we have collagenolytic property also it is uh, your uh, Cola genolytic also and then we have the proteolytic property also collagenolytic property collagen uh, proteolytic uh, properties they are present uh, they may cause considerable damage to the eye because basically they are penetrating and they are causing the necrosis so another important word that you have to remember is the necrosis or the cell death so what is happening basically whenever we are talking about the necrosis this is causing diminution of the vascularity of the anterior segment necrosis means we have no blood supply and no blood supply means dead tissue so corneal opacification will be there we have melting we have cataract and semblephron again two important things you can have the cataract also you can have semblephron I, I think this has been asked many times semblephron occurs due to the so um, other ones the other alkalis you can see is the ammonia is there sodium hydroxide are there and they are causing the necrosis of cornea Right. Now immediately after the accident there is an intense conjunctivitis, there is chemosis but the cornea looks clear and therefore it is difficult. If you look immediately after the accident we do not get opacification because it takes some time by the alkalis to work for it and you start getting the opacification. So what you can do? You can use a drop of fluorescein. So which stain we are using? Another important question. We are using the fluorescein stain to stain that denuded area, the corneal ulcer of the epithelium and what you are going to get is a limbal ischemia and the degree of corneal clarity provides some indication of the final visual status of the patient right so you can see this is a case of alkali burn you can see the ischemia is seen in the inferior 180 degrees and cornea is hazy also so this kind of picture you are going to see in the alkali burns now a very popular classification is the Hughes-Roper-Hall classification. So you should at least know the name of this classification that it is used for the alkali burns. Prognosis should be guarded, care being taken to impress upon the patient, uh, the gravity of injury and the necessity for supervision. So why we are doing this grading? In order to see that what is the severity, what is the grade, what should be your line of action, how much grave the situation is for the counseling of the patient to tell the status of the patient again it is important in the worst cases uh, you are going to get the cornea dull or opaque so if the cornea is dull that means it's a grave situation and it's a um, it's a situation where extra care has to be done now in the succeeding days ischar formation is there can you tell me where else you um, read about the word ischar we also read this in cases of the ocular mucormycosis in the ocular mucormycosis also we actually talk about this and it is thrown out then we have the granulation of the injured conjunctiva and then we have ulceration of the cornea so ultimately you know a kind of ulcer is formed there in severe lime burns the entire cornea may be destroyed and ultimately the eyeball will shrunk 
lithiasis bulbi can take place, right? In less severe cases, a porcelain like dense vascularized leukoma forms and the sight is lost. So, they can say all except are the fall one is the changes of the alkali burn. You can have the thysis bulbi that is forming. Number two, you can have the vascular leukoma that can also be there. Then um, number three, you can have ischar formation. Number four, you can have diminution of vision and other things. So all these things are taking place. The chief, chief danger for, uh, resulting from the condition of the conjunctiva is the damage to the ocular surface. We can have dry eye. We can have adhesion of lip to the globe. So number five, we can have dry eyes. All these are the changes which are taking place. Number six, we also have the simblephron. Simblephron. We have the simblephron that is taking place. Number seven, cataract formation is also taking place, right? Simblephron is thus produced and it may interfere with the nutrition. Limbal ischemia will lead to the damage of limbal stem cells. Limbal stem cells are going. This causes epithelial defects and the conjunctivalization of corneal epithelium. So a lot of things are happening and I have tried to summarize them in seven to eight points. Now looking at the treatment. In the injury which is caused by the alkalis, the excess of the deleterious material must be removed by the copious and immediate irrigation with the normal saline. So this is your first thing because you know a lot of alkalis cause causing a problem. So first thing you should do is remove that. Now do the copious irrigation of the conjunctival sac, remove all these uh, irritants. Now what should I take? I can take normal saline, uh, you can take normal saline, you can take ringer lactate, but the best is the basal salt solution. So even if it is not present, go with normal saline, go with ringer lactate, even if this, that is also not present, go with the tap water. You have to remove them. Intravenous infusion line is useful in directing a steady controlled flow of saline onto the ocular surface. Now what you have to uh, take care, you have to take care that all furnaces should be washed and irrigation continued till. Now what should be the level? Second important thing, this is the first question. Second, till the pH returns to normal or for minimum of 30 minutes. So you have to do the copious irrigation either till the pH becomes normal or 30 minutes you have to do. There should be no delay in instituting the therapy. If the saline is not available, go with the water. Ye galti nahi karni hai ki you, you are finding and wasting the time for normal saline, ringer lactate and other things. If you do not have them, then use water. Okay. Particles of lime must be picked up with the forceps after installation of a local anesthetic, then uh, antibiotic as well as cycloplegic. So what are the drugs that you are going to use? You are using uh, the anesthetic okay for the removal of those foreign body uh, particles, then antibiotic should be given cycloplegics. Antibiotic obviously there is a risk of super added infection, cycloplegic for the relief of pain, right? Corticosteroids, yes, they are also given to reduce the inflammation, prevent the formation of granulation tissue. Now, should I give steroids? Steroids will again cause melting, but again, I always tell you that steroids are the double-edged sword. So, you have to use them. Maybe you can limit its use. You can decrease the time for which it is used. Uh, you can use... Uh, topically as drops or you can use them as ointments. Then you can give the anti-glaucoma drugs, acetazolamide tablets because you have to decrease the intraocular pressure. So you can supplement these steroids along with the acetazolamide. Then you can stop. So as I always say, then you can st stop these steroids because they may precipitate the corneal melting. Then other things you have to give is your ascorbic acid, vitamin C and tetracycline because they will help in healing. Right, to inhibit the collagenolysis and stromal damage, 10% sodium citrate, 5% anacetylcysteine and 1% medroxyprogesterone eye drops are also used. So a number of drugs which have been used, tetracycline group of drugs are always used to prevent the uh, or inhibit the matrix metalloproteinases. So it gives you anti-collagenolytic effect, anti-proteolytic effect also. Then what else we can do? Simblephron ko prevent karne ke liye, what you can do is sweeping a glass rod because we have the risk of simblephron. So you can sweep a glass rod above and below near the furnaces so that you do not have the raw areas, adhesions. Uh, it should be repeated several times. Then we can also fit a contact lens. 
okay so that the two mucosal surfaces are not in contact with each other that could be done and uh, then finally you can do the limbal cell transplant or the amniotic membrane graft so you have to do what you have to do the irrigation sometimes you know you have to avert the eyelid you have to remove those uh, tuna particles you can use a local anesthetic you have to do the debridement you have to remove the dead tissue and then lot many drugs you have to use antibiotic ointment you are using tetracycline group of drugs you are using sodium citrate you are using steroids you are using vitamin c ascorbic acid you are using and then you have got you know your mucolytics are there as well as you know steroid eye drops along with the steroid eye drops don't forget to give the acetazolamide to reduce the intraocular pressure right Okay, now coming to the other one, the other one is the acids, acids may you have hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, now the advantage of acids is that they are causing the precipitation of the proteins, so there is no risk of deep penetration, this is how acids are better than the alkalis in causing the injury, they should be again treated by copious irrigation with normal saline, acids will also produce a limbal ischemia, uh, we have simblephron, so a slight and milder form of alkali burns is there. So treatment profile will remain the same. Again, irrigation you have to do, you have to remove the particles, then you have to do the debridement and same sort of drugs have to be given. Now talking about the mechanical injuries. Mechanical injuries to the globe, right, uh, can occur in a number of ways and they are causing a lot of problems. So the ocular trauma classification group has given a uniform classification so basically, you know, acid injuries are less severe than the alkali injuries. Uh, all the defects, all the uh, consequences will be same, but a milder form. So treatment profile will also be same. So two important things are that acids have lesser chances of the penetration, while alkalis have more chances of penetration, more inflammation, more necrosis, char formation, cataracts, simblephrons. So the treatment should be immediate. You should not waste time in getting the right and the most appropriate remedy. If you are not getting normal saline, if you are not getting the ring elected, go with the water. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.